The next talk will be FMNH 2211, The Hard Life of a Young Tyrannosaur by Tom Cullen. All right, thank you. So, um, I'll be talking today about a specimen that is involved in some of our um, dinosaur growth research at the Field Museum, specifically this thin section from a metatarsal bone of a Gorgosaurus labratus. Um, this specimen was originally collected in 1922 by um, Elmer Riggs, um, relatively well-known field museum paleontologist who collected a lot of really significant material that's currently in museum collections. This was collected in the Lake Cretaceous of, um, or from rocks of the Lake Cretaceous of Southern Alberta in what is now Dinosaur Provincial Park. It's a, a um, partially articulated skeleton, relatively complete, really nice feet on it. Um, as well as some other kind limb elements, which is what, um, why we're sampling it, because part of our work, trying to figure out um, large bodies as evolution in dinosaurs, and this thing plays a key role in that, because while it is relatively large as a tyrannosaur, it is quite a bit smaller than things like T-Rex, so it's in that nice little in-between size. And what's really interesting about this is when we take a thin section from one of its bones, like its um, metatarsal here, you can actually see from the bone texture uh, quite a bit of interesting details. So the thing about looking at bone histology, I'm not sure how easily you guys in the back can see this, but um, in the lighter part near the top, the bone texture is very well vascularized, so it's very disorganized. And that, from that, you can tell the animal is growing pretty quickly. This is relatively typical for fast-growing, warm-blooded animals. Um, and if you look at the really dark, sort of spotty spaces at the very bottom or on the right, that's what's called remodeling, and that either happens in really old individuals or in areas of the bone that are under stress, such as where muscle attachment happens. So that's all pretty normal for one of these things. And you can maybe see the lines that like, encircle, the rings that encircle throughout the texture of the bone. Those are annual growth rings. Um, these represent cessations of growth, where then you have um, growth slowing down during periods of scarcity, typically happens annually. There's a bit of mineralization that happens around that, and then growth restarts, and so you get this visual feature of a line. We can use those along with some mathematical models to age the animal and uh, get an idea of its, its growth trajectory. But what makes us um, makes this particular specimen of interest and why my title was The Hard Life of a Tyrannosaur is that you can sometimes get a feature that's only being um, really recognized widely now, and we still don't know entirely what causes it. We have some ideas we'll get to in a second. And that's called a, a multiple leg or a double or triple leg. And what happens there is when you're forming those growth lines, you can actually sometimes, if you have a particularly bad year, you can have multiple cessations of growth in the same annual period, and that appears as, instead of having one single line, you'll have two or three, or in this case, at one part, five lines, super tightly spaced right next to each other, and that sometimes, depending on where in the circumference you are, will either grade um, from a single line into multiple lines, back to a single line again. And so it's, it's not super common to have these, but it's, as I said, becoming more widely known now. And in a lot of the samples we're looking at, we'll find that in the course of a whole lifespan of an adult animal um, over the 15, 20 years or something, we'll find two or three cases of this in its growth marks, that like two or three out of say like 20 will have multiple, um, multiple lines. This animal is, has about six or seven lines, and every single one of them has multiple, multiple lines at some point in the cortex. And on the third one, it starts, starts out near the top, as a single line, goes around, before it gets to the big crack on the left there, it's already split into two lines. After that, it splits into five lines. So this suggests this animal is having an absolutely hard time um, acquiring resources on a regular basis to sustain its otherwise rapid growth. And some experiments in living animals today tell us that this might be something that's more common in predator animals than herbivores, and that makes sense if you think about it, because there's always lots of plants around, unless you're in a severe drought or something. Whereas these guys actually have to hunt and obtain prey, and most predators fail more than they succeed. So this one may have been particularly bad at it, and that might also be why it died when it was relatively young and hadn't achieved um, a full adult body size yet. But that represents a great opportunity for us um, and a great collection resource because now we have this animal that's 
in this um, sub-adult stage, that's a perfect data point for our, our studies of growth. Thanks. Thank you.